Plain Tobacco Packaging, Wikipedia Article Audio Plain Tobacco Packaging, also known as generic, neutral, standardized or homogeneous packaging, refers to packaging that requires the removal of all branding, permitting manufacturers to print only the brand name in a mandated size, font, and place on the pack in addition to the health warnings and any other legally mandated information such as toxic constituents and tax paid stamps. The appearance of all tobacco packs is standardized, including the color of the pack. History The removal of branding on cigarette packaging aims to deter smoking by removal of positive associations of brands with the consumption of tobacco. It also aims to remove an available avenue of brand advertising for cigarette companies. Australia was the first country in the world to introduce plain packaging, with all packets sold from December 1, 2012 being sold in logo-free, drab dark brown packaging. There has been opposition from tobacco companies to plain packaging laws, some of which have sued the Australian government. Since the Australian government won the court cases, several other countries have enacted plain packaging laws. Evidence Plain packaging was included in guidelines to the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Opposition In 2016, on World No Tobacco Day, Held on May 31, the World Health Organization called on governments to get ready for plain packaging of tobacco products. By country Plain packaging appears to have been first suggested in 1989 by the New Zealand Department of Health's Toxic Substances Board which recommended that cigarettes be sold only in white packs with black text and no colours or logos. Australia. Public health officials in Canada developed proposals for plain packaging of tobacco products in the 1990s. A parliamentary committee reviewed the evidence and concluded that plain packaging could be a reasonable step in the overall strategy to reduce tobacco consumption. The committee recommended that legislation be implemented pending the outcome of government-sponsored research on the likely effectiveness of plain packs. However following tobacco industry lobbying and changes in government ministers the proposal was dropped. Tobacco Industry Response Australia, with the enactment of the Tobacco Plain Packaging Act on December 12, 2011, became the first country in the world to require tobacco products to be sold in plain packaging. Products manufactured after October 1, 2012, and all on sale after December 1, 2012 must be in the plain packaging. Following Australia's lead a number of other countries also require standardised packaging including France, United Kingdom, New Zealand, Norway, Ireland, and Hungary. Other Responses Legislation Belgium Canada only indirect evidence of plain packaging's effectiveness was available until its release in Australia. On May 24, 2011, Cancer Council Australia released a review of the evidence supporting the introduction of plain packaging to reduce youth uptake. The review had been conducted by Quit Victoria and Cancer Council Victoria. The review includes 24 peer-reviewed studies conducted over two decades, suggesting that packaging plays an important role in encouraging young people to try cigarettes. First impressions in Australia indicated that smokers feel that cigarettes taste worse in plain packaging and unexpected side effect. In addition, Evidence from quantitative studies, qualitative research, and the internal documents of the tobacco industry consistently identify packaging as an important part of tobacco promotion. 
Plain packaging can change people's attitudes towards smoking and may help reduce the prevalence of smoking, including among minors, and increase attempts to quit. Studies comparing existing branded cigarette packs with plain cardboard packs bearing the name and number of cigarettes in small standard font, found plain packs to be significantly less attractive. Additionally, research in which young adults were instructed to use plain cigarette packs and subsequently asked about their feelings towards them confirmed findings that plain packaging increased negative perceptions and feelings about the pack and about smoking. Plain packs also increased behaviors such as hiding or covering the pack, smoking less around others, going without cigarettes and increased thinking about quitting. Almost half of the participants reported that plain packs had either increased the above behaviors or reduced consumption. Auction experiments indicated that a likely outcome of plain packaging would be to drive down demand of tobacco products. A 2013 review found that plain packaging increased the importance of health warnings to consumers. Plain packaging in a darker color was associated with more harmful effects. Furthermore, plain packaging reduced confusion around health warnings. Plain packaging with large, graphic, warnings, was considered to impact on smoking cessation. There is little evidence yet as to what effect plain packaging will have on smoking in lower-income countries. Advertisement companies and consultants for the tobacco industry expressed concerns that plain cigarette packaging may establish a precedent for application in other industries. In 2012, correspondence between Mars, Inc. and the UK Department of Health conveyed concerns that plain packaging could be extended to the food and beverage industry. Together, with other policies such as tobacco taxes, plain packaging is considered by some as a form of social engineering. A study commissioned by Philip Morris International indicated that plain packaging would shift consumer preferences away from premium towards cheaper brands. The tobacco industry also expressed concern that plain packaging would increase the sales of counterfeit cigarettes. Roy Ram, former commander of Specialist Operations at New Scotland Yard and founding member of the Common Sense Alliance, a think tank supported by British American Tobacco, stated that it would be disastrous if the government, by introducing plain packaging legislation, the simplest mechanism for the ordinary consumer to tell whether their cigarettes are counterfeit or not. Plain Packs Protect Plain Packaging Campaign in the UK, Plain Packaging, Smoke Free Action Coalition, UK, The Answer is Plain, Cancer Research UK, Plain Packaging Materials Advocated by Non-Government Tobacco Control Organisations, Hosted by Cancer Council Australia, Plain Packs Aotero A Plain Packaging Campaign in New Zealand. Arguments against plain packaging include its effect on smuggling, its effect on shops and retailers, and its possible illegality. A study published in July 2014 by the British Medical Journal refuted those claims. In reporting Philip Morris's legal action against the Australian project, the Times of India noted in 2011 that plain packaging legislation was being closely watched by other countries, and that tobacco firms were worried the Australian plain packaging legislation might set a global precedent. In July 2012 it was reported that the American lobbying organization American Legislative Exchange Council had launched a worldwide campaign against plain packaging of cigarettes. With the backing of tobacco companies and other corporate interests, it was targeting governments planning to introduce bans on cigarette branding, including the UK and Australia.
tobacco companies were also reported to have provided legal advice and funding to Ukraine and Honduras governments to launch a complaint in the World Trade Organization on the grounds that the Australian legislation is contrary to a WTO intellectual property agreement. WDO complaints must be made by governments, not companies. British American Tobacco confirmed that they were helping Ukraine meet legal costs in their case against Australia. By May 2013 Cuba, Ukraine, Honduras and the Dominican Republic challenged Australia's rules through the WDO by filing requests for consultations the first step in challenging Australia's tobacco labelling laws at the WDO a request for consultations opened a 60-day negotiation window after which a formal complaint could be filed which, if successful, might have led to increased tariffs on Australian exports. On May 28, 2015 Ukraine, which exports no tobacco to Australia, decided to suspend its WDO action initiated by the previous Ukrainian government. The packaging of Cuban cigars is considered to contribute significantly to sales. Under the legislation, companies have had to sell their cigarettes in a logo-free, drab dark brown packaging from December 1, 2012. Government research found that a specific olive green color, Pantone 448C, was the least attractive color, particularly for young people. After concerns were expressed over the naming of the color by the Australian Olive Association, the name was changed to Drab Dark Brown. With the plain packaging and tax increases the Australian government aimed to bring down smoking rates from 16.6% in 2007 to less than 10 per center by 2018. Statistics published in 2014 showed that the amount of excise and customs duty on cigarettes fell by 3.4% in Australia in 2013 compared to 2012 when plain packaging was introduced. Some commentators referred to data provided by the tobacco industry and claimed that the tobacco sales volume had increased by 59 million sticks during the same period. According to Philip Morris International, 2013 saw a 0.3% increase in tobacco sales compared to 2012. Other commentators however contradicted these claims based on data published by the Australian Bureau of Statistics in March 2014. A study conducted by KPMG for three major cigarette manufacturers had found that illegal trade of drastically cheaper cigarettes had significantly increased, but an article in the British Medical Journal refutes this. After one year of plain cigarette packaging rule implementation, a special supplement to the British Medical Journal described that before plain packaging implementation 20% smokers want to quit but after implementation 27% smokers want to quit. The study found that plain packaging reduces brand appeal and brand image of tobacco products. If true, this would foretell fewer new smokers taking up the habit. An analysis of Philip Morris claims that the data is clear that overall tobacco consumption and smoking prevalence has not gone down concluded that this claim is wrong. A 2016 review by the Australian government found that the current packaging regime is having a positive impact on public health in Australia. In August 2010, Philip Morris International, British American Tobacco and Imperial Tobacco formed the Alliance of Australian Retailers, which commenced a multi-million dollar campaign against plain cigarette packaging. The campaign focused on grassroots advocacy, ostensibly on behalf of small business owners. When the funding source of the campaign was made public, large retailers such as Coles and Woolworths quickly withdrew support for the campaign. 
the tobacco companies subsequently hired a public relations firm to oversee the campaign. In May 2011, British American Tobacco launched a media campaign suggesting that illicit trade and crime syndicates would benefit from plain packaging. Bata CEO David Crow threatened to lower cigarette prices in order to compete, which he claimed could result in higher smoking amongst young people. Mr. Crow later commented he would tell his own children not to smoke cigarettes, because they are unhealthy. The Bata campaign is largely based on a report from Deloitte. Several of the claims contained in the report related to border protection, and have since been publicly refuted by customs officials, and the report itself indicated that it had relied extensively on unaudited figures supplied by the tobacco industry itself. In June 2011, Imperial Tobacco Australia launched a secondary media campaign, deriding plain packaging legislation as part of a nanny state. In June 2011, Philip Morris International announced it was using the provisions in a Hong Kong-Australia treaty to demand compensation for Australia's plain packaging anti-smoking legislation. As a US-based company, Philip Morris could not sue under the US-Australia Free Trade Agreement. The company rearranged its assets to become a Hong Kong investor in order to use the investor state dispute settlement provisions in the Australia-Hong Kong Bilateral Investment Treaty. Immediately following the passage of legislation on November 21, 2011, Philip Morris announced it had served a notice of arbitration under Australia's Bilateral Investment Treaty with Hong Kong seeking the suspension on the plain packaging laws and compensation for the loss of trademarks. Alan's Arthur Robinson represented Philip Morris. In response, Health Minister Nicola Roxon stated that she believed the government was on very strong ground legally, and that the government was willing to defend the measures. The continuance of trade and investment proceedings on the issue has been described as an affront to the rule of law in Australia. Dr Patricia Reynold, convener of the Australian Fair Trade and Investment Network said that big tobacco and other global corporations are lobbying hard to include the right of foreign investors to sue governments in the current negotiations for a Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Philip Morris International lost its case in December 2015. In November 2011, British American Tobacco announced that it would challenge the laws in the High Court as soon as they gained royal assent. In August 2012, the High Court ruled in favour of the Australian government. British American Tobacco placed freedom of information requests on a Cancer Institute NSW research survey of school students aged between 12 and 17, which asked how they react to plain packaging, where they get cigarettes from and what age they started smoking. The Cancer Council Victoria fought the FOI request saying that the tobacco company wanted to use the survey information to change their marketing to children to increase cigarette smoking among youth. The World Health Organization applauded Australia's law on plain packaging noting that the legislation sets a new global standard for the control of a product that accounts for nearly 6 million deaths each year. The Cancer Council of Australia hailed the passing of the legislation, stating, documents obtained from the tobacco industry show how much the tobacco companies rely on pack design to attract new smokers, you only have to look at how desperate the tobacco companies are to stop plain packaging, for confirmation that pack design is seen as critical to sales. The World Health Organization's director for the Western Pacific also congratulated Australia and stated that all countries and areas in the Western Pacific should follow Australia's good example. Colombia Speaking on Radio Australia, Don Rothwell, 
Professor of International Law at the Australian National University, noted that Philip Morris was pursuing multiple legal avenues. The notice of arbitration under the Bilateral Investment Treaty between Hong Kong and Australia has a 90-day cooling-off period after which the case would most likely be sent to the International Centre for Settlement of Investment Disputes in Washington. He stated that Philip Morris was most likely aiming for the Australian government to back down, or failing that, to sue for compensation. He said the questions to decide are whether the legislation means that Australia would acquire property by the imposition of these rules and if this legislation is a legitimate public health measure. Professor Rothwell noted, the growing recognition of the legitimacy of public health measures of this type. Professor Rothwell estimated that the legal cases, including any case before the High Court, would take up to a year to decide. However, in the United States, Judge Richard J. Leon ruled in 2011 that graphic health warning labels clearly display the government's opinion on smoking which he said cannot constitutionally be required to appear on the merchandise of private companies. He ruled that these warnings would unfairly hurt their sales that the warnings were crafted to provoke an emotional response calculated to quit smoking or never to start smoking. This, the judge ruled, was an objective wholly apart from disseminating purely factual and uncontroversial information. This finding may be appealed. The Associated Press noted that Philip Morris took less than an hour to launch legal action against the Australian legislation. It also stated that Australian legislation followed the lead of Uruguay which requires that 80 percenter of cigarette packages is devoted to warnings in Brazil, where cigarette packages display graphic images of dead fetuses, hemorrhaging brains, and gangrenous feet. Gavin Allen of the Daily Mail newspaper reported that the Philip Morris lawsuit could cost the Australian government billions. He also noted that the Australian law is being closely watched by other governments in Europe, Canada, and New Zealand. In 2005, the World Health Organization urged countries to consider plain packaging, and noted that Bhutan had banned the sale of tobacco earlier in 2011. New Zealand Associate Health Minister Tariana Turia congratulated the Australian Health Minister noted that tobacco labelling rules have long been harmonised between Australia and New Zealand, and looked forward to New Zealand following suit. In April 2011, Minister Roxanne released an exposure draft of plain packaging legislation with an expected start date of July 1, 2012. Australian newspapers reported that the legislation was likely to pass despite concerns from the opposition. It was suggested the opposition resistance to the legislation was due to their continuing acceptance of funding donations from tobacco companies. On May 31, 2011 Liberal leader Tony Abbott announced that his party would support the legislation and would work with the government to ensure the legislation is effective. European Union Minister Roxon introduced the Plain Packaging Bill to Parliament on July 6, 2011, and it passed through the lower house on August 24, 2011. The legislation passed the upper house on November 10, 2011 with the amended start date of December 1, 2012. Due to the changed start date the legislation returned to the lower house before being given royal assent. Legislation finally passed on November 21, 2011. France Hungary Alliance of Australian Retailers, Hands Off Our Packs, Forest Tobacco Plain Packaging Bill 2011 India Article with links to graphic health warnings, 
Alan Taylor, Regulatory Chill and Challenges to Tobacco Packaging Laws, Jurist Forum, December 7, 2011 Ireland Malaysia In March 2015, a early day motion forwarded by Deputy Catherine Fong to consider plain packaging in Belgium. However, it was opposed and stuck down by the Federal Public Health Select Committee. Later in November 2016, the Health Minister Maggie de Bloch said she is open to idea of plain packaging, once the introduction of plain packaging in France and the UK has been reviewed. This was done on top of a list of new tobacco laws such as increasing taxes and raising the purchasing age to 18. New Zealand In 2011, Health Canada introduced changes to the tobacco products labelling regulations that included 16 new graphic health warnings covering 75% of the principal faces of cigarette and little cigar packages. As of September 2015, Health Canada is not planning regulatory action that would require plain or standardised packaging of tobacco products. The department considers its commitment to introduce health-related labeling requirements on cigarettes and little cigars fulfilled. In early October 2015, the Liberal political party leader, Justin Trudeau, announced that he would include the introduction of plain tobacco packaging as part of his platform, under the heading of Healthier Kids. He has received positive feedback from cancer advocacy groups, including the Canadian Cancer Society. He has since become the Prime Minister and has told his health minister, Jane Philpott, that he expects her to introduce plain packaging requirements for tobacco products, similar to those in Australia and the United Kingdom. Norway in March 2015, a bill similar to the Australian one was established before the Congress of the Republic, since it was intended to regulate the packaging and labelling of tobacco products. The ultimate goal of this bill was to achieve a total ban on its advertising, promotion and sponsorship. Although the bill was filed a few months after the passage of the legislature, the one that has come to be debated in the first presentation in the House of Representatives allows concluding that Colombia is not far from adopting a regulation on the matter. In 2010 the European Commission launched a public consultation on a proposal to revise Directive 2001-37-EC which covers health warnings, limits on toxic constituents, etc., for tobacco products. The consultation included a proposal to require plain packaging. Although Commissioner Daly has rejected plain packaging as an option, the European Union included in its proposal for a new tobacco products directive the option for the member states to introduce plain packaging. Legal scholars consider plain packaging to be consistent with primary European law and German law. Panama. The directive adopted April 3, 2014 explicitly states that 28 EU countries have the option of implementing plain packaging, a provision upheld on May 4, 2016 by the European Court of Justice as valid when dismissing a tobacco industry legal challenge. In December 2010, a UMP member of the French Parliament tabled a member's bill aimed at creating plain packaging. However the bill did not pass despite ongoing support from health associations. As in other countries there was fierce protest from the tobacco industry and tobacco retailers associations. The health minister also seemed lukewarm in his support, preferring to see the effect of newly introduced health warnings. Philippines. Under the next legislature however, the socialist new government health minister, Marisol Turen, 
said she would fight especially at the European level for neutral packaging. As in Australia, the tobacco industry countered that generic packaging would be easy to counterfeit, which would increase illegal cigarette sales. The EU directive eventually contained no explicit measures regarding plain packaging. In reaction, the French government announced the introduction of a bill containing provisions for generic cigarette packaging on September 25, 2014. The bill was passed on December 17, 2015. The tobacco industry promptly attacked it in court, but lost its case. This legislation was upheld on January 21, 2016 as constitutional by France's Constitutional Council. Cigarettes manufactured after May 20, 2016 or sold after January 1, 2017 must be in plain packaging. Slovenia the decree of August 16, 2016 requires that new cigarette and tobacco brands that will be introduced on the Hungarian market after August 20, 2016 has to be in a uniform plain packaging, void of brand logos. Eventually, all cigarette and tobacco products are to be sold in uniform packs from May 20, 2019. As of July 2017 the first cigarettes with unified plain packaging hit the Hungarian market. Since after August 20, 2016 new brands have to be placed onto market with plain package, one new cigarette brand of Von Eiken GmbH was forced to be launched with such unified package. This means that Hungary became the fourth country in the world where plain packaging can be purchased in tobacco shops after Australia, France and the UK. Switzerland As of August 2012 India is believed to be considering plain packaging. BJD MP of Orissa, by Giant J Panda has submitted in the Lok Sava a private member's bill seeking an amendment to the anti-tobacco law aimed at increasing the size of health warning on tobacco product packets. The bill seeks amendment to the original Act from 2003 to stipulate for plain packaging of cigarette and tobacco products in the country and increase the size of health warning and the accompanying graphic on cigarettes packets. As of 2017, there has been no progress on this matter and tobacco continues to be labeled in branded packaging. In May 2013, Ireland announced plans to become the second country in the world to introduce plain pack cigarettes. In June 2014 the Irish government said it would legislate to implement plain packaging. Details of the bill known as the Public Health Bill 2014 were published on June 10, 2014. There is a wealth of international evidence on the effects of tobacco packaging in general and on perceptions and reactions to standardized packaging which support the introduction of this measure, Ireland's Health Minister James Riley said when releasing details of the bill. The bill was signed by President Michael D. Higgins on March 10, 2015. After some delays, it was announced that the law would take effect September 30, 2017, with the sale of previously manufactured cigarettes allowed until September 30, 2018. On February 24, 2016, the Malaysian Health Ministry announced that it is planning to follow Australia's example and introduce plain packaging for tobacco in the near future. Turkey Legislation to enable standardised packaging of tobacco products has been passed by the New Zealand Parliament and was given the royal assent on September 14, 2016. 
It is expected to come into force on March 14, 2018 the date on which regulations specifying the detailed requirements for standardized packaging will come into force. After that date distributors will have six weeks to clear old stock and following this retailers will have a further six weeks to dispose of old stock. This will mean that standardized tobacco packaging will begin to appear from mid-March 2018 with the transition being complete by June 6, 2018. United Kingdom Discussion of the need for standardized packaging and the passage of the legislation through Parliament took four and a half years. In April 2012 following an inquiry by the Mori Affairs Select Committee, government approved plain packaging in principle, a move that tobacco companies said they would strenuously oppose. From July to October 2012 the Ministry of Health undertook a consultation which attracted over 20,000 submissions from public health groups and also the tobacco industry. In February 2013 government decided to proceed with legislative change in alignment with Australia. A bill to require the plain packaging of tobacco products The Smoke-Free Environments Amendment Bill was introduced on December 17, 2013. The bill had its first reading on February 11, 2014. It was referred to the Health Committee for consideration which reported it back to Parliament with minor amendments on August 11, 2014 including a change in title from plain packaging to standardized packaging. The bill was stalled due to concern over legal action against the Australian government's plain packaging regime. However, in February 2016, Prime Minister John Key commented that there was now firm legal ground for plain packaging and that the measure could become law by the end of 2016. On June 30, 2016, the bill was given its second reading with consideration by the Committee of the Whole House on August 23, 2016 and the third and final reading on September 8, 2016. On May 31, 2016 the Associate Minister of Health, Pasetta Sam Lotuiga, released a consultation document on the detail of standardized packaging requirements. An order in council was issued on June 6, 2017, making the Smoke-Free Environments Regulations 2017 specifying detailed requirements for the standardized design of tobacco packages and products, and also specifying requirements for new and larger warning messages for tobacco packaging. These regulations come into force on March 14, 2018. As of the June 6, 2018, only standardized tobacco packages will be sold in New Zealand. In August 2012, it was believed that Norway began considering plain packaging. On the May 31, 2016 on World No Tobacco Day, the health minister Bent High announced the introduction of plain packaging to Norway by 2017. The plain packaging rule will apply to SNES as well as cigarettes. In December 2016, the Norwegian parliament voted overwhelmingly in favour of implementing standardised packaging for tobacco products. The measure will be introduced at the same time as the EU Tobacco Products Directive measures on packaging and labelling, taking effect on July 1, 2017. Retailers will be given one year to transition to the new standardized cigarette packages and smokeless tobacco boxes. Since 2017, the National Assembly has discussed Draft Law 136 on plain packaging. The bill proposes that the color of the packs be dark matte gray and that the mark be presented in white aerial font, size 20, highlighted in bold. 
Panama ranks second in having the lowest prevalence in the world of consumption, since only 6.4% of adults in the isthmus smoke. Anti-smoking group New Voice Association of the Philippines favored the introduction of plain cigarette packaging in the Philippines as part of their campaign on the 2016 World No Tobacco Day and urged then-presumptive President Rodrigo Duterte to implement a law to standardize cigarette packs. The Department of Health, however, is not ready to implement plain cigarette packaging and rather focus on enforcing graphic health warnings on cigarette packs under the Graphic Health Warning Act of 2014 that took effect in March 2016. On the February 15, 2017, the Parliament of Slovenia passed a law for the introduction of plain packaging from 2020. On December 5, 2014, Swiss parliamentarian pierre Alain Frides tabled a motion for plain packaging in Switzerland. A few days later, the Federal Council said it was opposed to this, saying such a measure goes too far. In September 2011, Bloomberg reported that the Turkish government was working on plain packaging regulations. An Istanbul-based newspaper, Milayet, reported that under the proposal all branding elements would disappear and cigarettes would come in numbered black boxes excluding any imagery other than health warnings. In November 2016, Health Minister Recep Okta stated that Turkey will introduce plain packaging where the brand of cigarettes will almost be invisible and sellers will be obliged to store the cigarettes in closed cases instead of transparent displays in 2017. In March 2011, the coalition government committed itself to holding a public consultation on tobacco packaging. This was due to take place in spring 2012. In November 2013, the British government announced an independent review of cigarette packaging in England, amid calls for action to discourage young smokers. Ms Ellison rejected Labour suggestions the rethink had been prompted by fears of defeat in the Lords, saying, it's a year this weekend since the legislation was introduced in Australia. It's the right time to ask people to look at this. The Plain Packs Protect campaign by an alliance of health organisations sets out the case for tobacco plain packaging in the UK, as does Cancer Research UK's The Answer is Plain campaign, which was launched soon after the government consultation was announced. Opposing this is the smokers' rights group Forest, funded by the tobacco industry, which has launched a counter-campaign titled Hands Off Our Packs. In August 2014 Philip Morris International foreshadowed legal action against the UK government if it introduced plain packaging. In a submission to the government, Philip Morris International said it would seek compensation running into billions of pounds, if the proposed legislation went ahead. The Children and Families Act 2014 included a provision for implementing plain cigarette packaging, which would be subject to parliamentary approval. In March 2015, the House of Commons voted 367-113 in favour of plain cigarette packaging in England. Plain packaging is required for cigarettes manufactured after May 20, 2016 or sold after May 21, 2017. Tobacco company Philip Morris has made a FOI request regarding the University of Stirling's teen smoking studies. Campaigns for Plain Packaging Campaigns Against Legislation Other